I'll make a motion to open the select board board of health uh, meeting for um, March 29th at 5.02 p.m. Thank you, Trevor. All right, and I will open the finance committee meeting at 5.02 p.m. for March 9th, 2022. You don't have a quorum, so you don't need to do it. No, I'm a guest today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, why don't we start with the minutes so we don't forget. Motion to approve the minutes that Jim just finished up writing from last week. It was March 22nd. Okay. Any comments? No. Um, we do not have anybody remote. All those in favor? All opposed? Any abstentions? All right. So that's one, two, three, four, zero, one. Wait, we got one more. Oh. Uh, Five zero one. It's for the minutes. There are tons of handouts. Um, <laughs> actually, um, now Mark has to um, open the uh, capital improvement meeting because there's three of us here. Um, I think we need four, though. Yeah, we need four. Yeah. Oh, we do need four. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so there's new budget sheets for Tritown Beach and the swim program. There's a new um, total expenses sheet. Um, there's a couple other handouts. There's the agenda. I put together a one page summary of the wastewater treatment plant costs that we can look at at some point if we want to. Um, I've also started writing a summary of the budget yeah. <laughs> and this is still very, very rough and the numbers are in the right ballpark, but are not necessarily, Brenda has not verified my numbers and that needs doing because I'm sure there's a couple that are there, but it at least gives us a ballpark value of the um, increases or changes to the budget that are beyond the like following the salary schedule and you have a percent increase or you have an inspection this year that you didn't have last year so the price went up or whatever right uh, so that is there so there's this here. that's this one yeah it looks like a little so there's a big differences from this year to last year yep and we can go through that if you want to um, there's a list, Casey printed out for us a list, just sort of the list of articles that will be on the warrant, um, all of which we will have to review and um, at some point. And then there's a capital project list, which is the summary of the work of the CIPC, um, which has their priority list on it. So I think the way to approach this, and that, that's going to be our kind of our first topic. So why don't we start with the roll-up sheet and the changes, the funding that came in for the um, storm damage and whatever. Do you want to summarize that for us? Okay. Um, so I did update the summary sheet. Um, two things that you all got copies of that uh, did change was the swim program and the Tritown Beach. Tritown Beach does have a budget. They are coming tonight around 6.30 or so to meet with us and discuss that. So those are now numbers that I think are, are pretty good numbers to work with. Um, on your last page, I removed the, um, the need to cover the emergency spending that we had from the July storm last year. And the reason I removed it was because Joe Comerford was able to obtain for us 376,000 and some dollars, I can't remember the exact amount, uh, to be able to cover any costs associated with that. Um, we have additional spending that we need to do. And then um, uh, I'm not exactly sure what, what the select board will choose to do with the remainder of it, but um, that's what that, that's all about. So that did give us 70,000 more that we didn't have. 
So if we add up our estimated revenues and subtract this, we have about a hundred thousand left yeah. for capital. Correct. Would with no change in the, how you're treating free cash. <laughs> Correct. Still leaving two hundred and fifty thousand on the table if that's what you choose to do. Correct. Okay. Any questions or comments or discussion on that? Um, we have not discussed this as a select board, but um, we probably will set aside the rest of the money for the storm damage as a match for hopefully a hazardous mitigation um, grant, which would be about 75%. That's what we're hoping to get. Um, so it would, it would pay a considerable amount towards that. So we're very happy. For like the River Road project, which is yeah. what we're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah, that's like 2.4 million or something like that. With that, let's go to capital projects. Um, Mark, do you want to give us a summary of what we're looking at here? Sure. Uh, can everyone hear me? Uh, it was remote right now. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Great. Uh, you're welcome. So um, the CIPC uh, met and kind of finalized our recommendations and priorities. Um, this year and last year were kind of the, the first years where we had the kind of volume of requests that we've had. Uh, last year's approach was we had uh, 18 capital requests and we ranked them from one to 18. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, going through when we did this last year and um, you know tried to prioritize them, you know, in that, in that list and, you know, move them around. And it, it, it took up a lot of time this year, you know, since the town meeting is going to be a, a little bit earlier, we, we didn't really have time to do that, nor I, I don't think we derived a lot of value from it. So what we did this time is we classified each of these requests after we uh, voted to either recommend or not recommend them into five different categories. So you will see under the FY 2023 priorities column, uh, a bunch of priorities. So the first are pre-approved or pre-funded projects. A lot of these are multi-year capital requests that um, we are uh, uh, assigning that priority level. The second uh, priority level is uh, what we're putting into a, a safety and health bucket. So things that uh, we really don't have a lot of wiggle room on and, and would like to prioritize. Uh, so that way we um, you know, can kind of keep things uh, either safe or, or, or not uh, have exposure for the town. Um, the next uh, prioritization category are uh, items that are either of operational importance or to prevent further damage to the assets that we have. Um, the fourth category is for proactive priorities, and then five is kind of the everything else. So um, I can go through this list, but before I do, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, great. So we recommended... Um, uh, a bunch of uh, things here. Uh, the, the first um, that I'll go through, I'm gonna come back to the capital stabilization fund um, because I, I think we all kind of know um, that that's gonna be tough to do this year, but um, would like to at least call out that our target is to have $1 million in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I know that some years we're not gonna be able to, uh, to, to add to that fund. So we're, we're gonna um, skip that for now. But uh, the first is for the Deerfield Elementary School, we have a few uh, top priorities here. The first are the restroom reno renovations and the um, classroom flooring um, uh, replacements. So those, those are the, the multi-year items that I was talking about. And then skipping ahead to uh, the next page here, we also have um, another, um, uh, actually, it looks like uh, this one, that's, that's number one under, the uh, brush wood chipper should actually be a two. So if all of you could amend your sheets, the brush, uh, chipper. The brush, brush chipper should be a, a two. So those I think are the only items that are, are the, the multi-year items, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll amend that if, if that's uh, incorrect. Uh, so now going to the, the health and safety items, uh, we have the air conditioning for the skills and music room uh, for the school, uh, the commercial dishwasher, um, we also have the police HVAC design, engineering and construction, uh, the wastewater treatment facility upgrades, and then um, 
the, uh, the, the wood chipper here. Um, most of these I think are kind of self-explanatory with the impacts on health and safety. The only one that might not be readily apparent um, is the wood chipper. The wood chipper is a 20 year old wood chipper that does not have uh, any kind of safety features for uh, making um, the operator safe uh, should uh, the operator get drawn in towards the wood chipper. There's no pull cord or arm bar or anything like that. So uh, at least want to call that out because that's, that's not an obvious uh, line item here. So um, in order to kind of uh, protect our, our workers, we're, we're uh, deciding to assign that uh, priority level two. And then on to the things that are of operational importance, um, we have some recommendations here. Um, one is for the mini excavator, it's the bottom of page two. Uh, this one is gonna be important for um, doing culvert clearing and, and also working on our sidewalk project. Um, and then uh, the next item that we have that's of that priority is um, on the second page, the uh, highway department's building HVAC software. This software here, um, is uh, pretty necessary to uh, invest in. Um, so we stop wasting money on um, this uh, HVAC system, you know, not, not firing. And it also protects future risk from us not being able to run this, um, this aging software on newer uh, hardware. So that's why we uh, assigned that, that priority level. And then finally, we have some senior center repairs that we need to perform to uh, prevent some damage uh, to the existing structure. Moving on to some of the proactive priorities, um, we have a um, APR land purchase. Um, that's our first uh, priority four. We also have um, the uh, preservation for the old grammar school um, there as well. And then going over to the other page here, we have um, a, a lot of the public works requests um, the asphalt sidewalk repairs, town common rehab, Leary lot, and then also the uh, shed replacement. Uh, some of us did have a chance to take a look at the shed. Um, depending on, you know, what we need to do there, um, this this number could be uh, slightly different from the the ten the ten thousand. The original ask I think was fifteen. It was modified to ten. I wouldn't be surprised if that um, you know changes again, but. Uh, this is actually um, a, a little bit more critical than I had thought. Um, this structure is, you know, not only used for controlling the compactor, but it's also where I believe the camera hardware is. So, um, you know, we can't really neglect that, but um, it's not as dire of a need, I guess, as some of the other uh, um, things that we have. And then we also have the senior housing feasibility study uh, at that priority level as well. Priority level five is the um, capital stabilization fund, which you know we might not even be able to fund this year. And then um, uh, some of you may notice that um, we do not have a recommendation for either of the Tilton Library um, asks here. Um, the uh, the committee uh, did not vote to recommend this uh, either of these items at the current amount. Questions? Yeah, the um, commercial dishwasher. Yep. You're anticipating another hundred twenty thousand next year, or is that a is that a split you have? I think I believe that's like capital stuff that, that like the rest of the kitchen needs a lot of work, and I think those are asked, not just the dishwasher, but like they're going to. I don't know if it's the walk-in freezer and some other things. Well, they have another line item for. Oh, you do. Yeah, I think there's more like that when we toured that. Uh, I'm on the capital committee for the frontier and we toured the kitchen and it really doesn't function the way it is it's very outdated and i think they, they are going to need to do um i think they'll have other asks as it relates to that kitchen not the dishwasher but just the way the kitchen lays out that on here already. Sorry, one. the next line up says oh yeah, that, that may be correct. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at it. But, um, you know, for, for 2023, the, the number is accurate. Right. So 2024, scratch out one of the 120,000? Uh, I will confirm for that one. You, you can scratch it out now if you'd like, but okay. yeah, I'll confirm. Can somebody explain oh, what the supplies would be uh, sidewalk repair. The reason I asked that question is last year we had a extensive discussion on that 
and we got sidewalk repairs according to fiscal year 22 approved at 250,000. But I thought we took money out of uh, another fund somewhere and we're funding something like five or 600,000. I don't think it's that that high. Um, I, is that I haven't seen that been done with any sidewalk. Right. No, we, we I think the so original- are we just throwing us into another million dollar slush fund? No, the original uh, ask was I think around 500,000 and I think the town decided to put maybe 250 last year. That hasn't actually taken off yet, but I believe it's gonna happen in the spring. Um, but we have, I, I don't think we've put any other money towards that yet. It was only- the second fund that we we're gonna fund some of that. I don't remember. We took it out of capital stabilization, but I don't know if there's another. I believe that it came from two sources, capital stabilization, and I don't remember if it was free, free cash. Free cash, maybe. And the original ask was something around 500,000, and then that was uh, brought down to, I think, something like 250 and 100,000, respectively. I'd have to confirm that, but. There was, some, it, like there was more than 250, I know that. Um, yeah, it's certainly possible. Certainly nowhere close to a million, but it's certainly possible, and, and the, the, that hasn't really started yet. Um, so yeah, uh, we are you know obviously not the originators of this request, um, but we're we're just recommending that as a priority for from you know the department that that put in that request. Now you didn't put the priority on this thing, other than priority one, correct? Uh, no, we have priorities one through four listed. There's an updated one since what they emailed us this morning. That's the one I got off the computer today. <laughs> no. So I took my 35 messages off the computer this morning. <laughs> finished this afternoon. And I still got wrong information. So much for good technology. That's what I was looking for, the priorities. That's why I just did it. Skip, you are correct. Um, we should have the three million on there. Um, when you brought that up at our meeting, I was under the assumption that we would be doing phase one to 19 million then you would take off the USDA grant and that would be below our 19 million appropriated for to borrow. And then it would be our 3 million with a contingency, we would have enough money. But um, when uh, speaking with Trevor, um, he told me that we in fact have to borrow the 3 million and that because of the timing of the bid process. So 3 million of the sewer treatment plant should be on our um, capital plan, like you had said. It is, it just isn't prioritized, I yes. think. I think maybe they, I don't know. I think we did that maybe after they met or I'm not sure when. Well, it, it you went. explained it to me, you explained it to me um, Wednesday, right. Trevor. And um, and we had already met. And oh, okay, yeah, I wasn't sure when. Or Thursday, no, Friday, you explained it to me. Friday, when we had our selectman meeting oh, on Friday. That's right. And- They melt together. Yeah, I know I'm losing it. Um, so chronologically, we cannot count on the USDA uh, loan reduction happening before we need the additional 3 million. You are absolutely correct, um, Skip. So, and I, I did not understand that chronological order. In my mind, I thought between the contingency fund and the USDA grant, we would, we would be still under the 19 million, but that's not gonna be true. Um, or by the end of, the end of 23. Not, not phase two, but um, <laughs> yeah, they're moving quick, but not that fast. I think, so just if I have, if I have this right, we're doing phase one now, it should be done by the end of March, 2023. We'd like to execute two change orders to stay under that 19 million. Um, and then we'd like to ask town meeting this 
this April if we could um, authorize a debt exclusion for three million dollars for phase two of the project um, alternates so that the whole project would be done. But my guess is, and the whole reason to do that and not wait and try and tie it to something else is we'd love to keep the, the builder who's there. Um, they're already there. You don't have to pay mo mobilization. So those change orders, and hopefully they will bid on phase two. And because they're already there, they'll everybody. It'll work out for everybody. I think it will be. Yeah. So that's the goal: is to ask everybody at town meeting for that. And I assume that's a priority one. That's yeah. Yes. It, it, it's it's. Certainly. I would consider it priority one because we're already funding this, just like we're funding the third year of the bathroom renovations and the third year of the um, flooring. This is this is a continuation phase two of what we already appropriated in phase one. The the problem with um, number you know our second priority group truly if we need to have a working dishwasher for us as Board of Health to sign off on the kitchen operation in the fall. And the same as, you know, the walk-in cooler for Frontier. You gotta, you gotta be able to keep the food from a safety point of view, you gotta keep the food cool and you gotta have sanitation of the dishes. So we're limping along towards the end of the year. Hopefully everything will work out, but it does need to be replaced. I just wanted to mention we had uh, a message that people couldn't hear so if just a reminder if people speak into the mic thank you go ahead Alan. um my uh, question is just it's a little hard I, I don't know if this is a question for you my question for select board or for brenda um it's just a little hard to evaluate this with the large you know, multi-million dollar projects that are going to be debt. I mean, we're not, it, this is apples and oranges on here. Um, and I'm wondering, maybe we could have a little discussion about what the annual capital budget is going to be, because it's, you know, how, how long is the, is the borrowing? What is the annual amount for this to kind of tally it up and see what we can actually, what we can actually fund, um, because I think actually most of these projects, the majority of them are fundable. Um, and then if we know how much per year we would be expecting with these, with the borrowing, it would be really in informative to decide if we were, you know, if we wanted to fund it and if we have the capacity. And maybe well, that's part of what you put together, Julie, but it's still feeling really opaque to me on, and what the, sort of annual capital. I can say that the 3 million shouldn't count because that has to be voted by the town meeting and it has to be voted by by ballot and, and it would be part of the debt exclusion. So and then just 5.6 million those that's are, on there as well. Those have already been Yeah. Yep, all that. So so really we're looking at approximately what is this? One million dollars of requests at? for the. Um, we take out the oh, library. You mean the, we all take... of the requests combined? You mean? Um, yeah, I'm trying yeah. To I'm thinking about like oh. what is the capacity of the town to cover the capital requests. So, um, and uh, obviously, we'll have if we do this borrowing, we will have to pay some portion. But it's not. We're not going to be paying. You know, even even the library, the eight million dollars that the CIPC didn't recommend, um, that wouldn't be all at once. Correct. Money, um, and so it just makes it, it's just like a, it's opaque. It's hard to um, so it's hard to figure it out. <laughs> I was, How much are we going to need this year? Well, what right. I was thinking right. was, you know, some Comes of this, down. most of this, I think most of the items on here you would purchase with free cash or some sort of funds that we have already. The only borrowing we'd really wanna do would be um, any of the like large dollar items like over a hundred thousand dollars, you know? Um, so like the wastewater stuff, we're already borrowing. We're gonna ask for debt exclusion, that kind of thing. Um, I look at the mini excavator, it's your, you know, that would be more of a lease thing, like 23,000. I totaled up a, a lot of these items that were kind of twos and threes and ones. and. You're looking at about a couple hundred thousand dollars yeah. of, of need this year. And 
it feels like we might be able to pull that off. Um, and, and then the larger items, you know, we may have to wait or figure out like, would we borrow for, you know, obviously we're gonna borrow for the sewer. Um, I, I would like to look at a way to pay for the 100,000 for police engineering of, with either the money that we appropriated last year for the church. I think we talked about a little bit about this, um, you know, maybe saving 50 of that for whatever left over on the church repair for the seniors, and then take that 100,000 and put it towards the, um, the HVAC and the police. So a lot of these we would knock down. Um, I think it's important, even though, you know, Ostrowski's five, you know, 5% 5 APR is, is uh, level four. It's like, cause it's not super important, but, it, but it's kind of one of those things that has to kind of happen. I mean, I, it doesn't have to, it's up to the town, but I think that, you know, 11,000 in the realm of things should be important to do. And then the walk-in coolers are important and all the safety stuff. So it's not, a, I mean, once you break it down, it's not a huge list. Um, it is a lot of money, obviously, and we just have to kind of figure out how we come up with that couple hundred thousand. But um, whether we take some from capital stabilization or, or free cash or a mixture of both, but I think it's important to do that. Um, yeah, thank, that's helpful, Trevor. And yep. my thoughts on this are that all of these items you know, make, make sense. They're well thought out. I think that the, I really appreciate the rank, the prioritization system. It's yep. so helpful. Sure. Um, and, and I think the role of the finance committee is to determine like based on what the expenditures are going to be in FY23, what does the budget need to look like? You know, do we need, because the question that came up a few weeks ago is do we need to cut services, which is I right. think a really big heavy solemn question mm -hmm. um and if we do by how much and so right. you know uh i don't think any of this is really frivolous um i i wonder if some of it like the leary law if that can wait mm -hmm. um and if it can wait probably it should if that's a big chunk but um but it's just it's just not so tangible right you have to look at the funding too where's the funding source like um, Ostrowski's APR is being funded by CPC money. Um, Great. I didn't see that. Thank you. And um, the Leary lot is going to be funded by our ARPA money. So. Um, Skip, can you talk into the yep. duty? Sorry. Yep. So we've got expenditures of 13.2 uh, approved for 22 and, and a, some sort of request for 5.6 million in 23. Seems to me those things need to be pushed together and we've got 19 million in borrowing that's been approved. There is no other approval other than what we've already gone through that I know of. So we don't have to. So that 5.6 is already included in the 19 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so just cross it out and change the 13 million to 19. Should be set. That's helpful, Skip. But actually, let me say one thing first and then John can go. <laughs> so I'm sharing up on the screen. Oh, um, if we take these and sort them by um, priority. Mm -hmm. So these are in priority order of all the ones, just the ones that were approved by the committee. Um, here's the dollar value of the request and we can start sorting it into where the money's coming from. Oh, great. Then you get the total. This is the total of what we've gone through on the list so far. So if I start adding these in, that total will start going up. Is that helpful to think yeah. about it from this sure. perspective? Please. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yep, super helpful. Um, so we can, if you want to approach it this way, just start going down in priority order and saying where the funding coming from, and then we can see. And then when we get to the end and it's 300,000 out of the budget, we can go back and say, what are we going to do about it? Right. Does that work for folks? Yeah. Okay, we need your to turn. And then but the uh, opera money, I brought this up last week. Uh, you said it's going to be used for the Leary lot. Is, yes. there, is it restricted by opera as to what it's used for? 
or it's then, a, then why are we taking opera money and using it for a priority four? Well, it, it depends. Uh, we haven't really set exactly what we're spending the ARPA on yet. We still have some discussion to do. So, okay. Well, it's just stated by Carolyn, I believe that. Uh, well, we've uh, we've talked we've been talking about it for months, um, and it seems like uh, Hampshire Lumber is moving forward with their addition. So we're hoping to get access to Elm Street and work with Berkshire Brew and the ARPA money is for economic, uh, you know, replacement of economic loss. And so we consider, you know, doing the Leary lot um, as spurring economic um, downtown vitality kind of project. So it's stipulated it has to be for economic loss, something. It has to be some. If it's stipulated, okay, I just. It just has to be spent on general government services for right. the most part. Once we once we choose a revenue replacement um, uh, designation, and then the select board, just like any other grant, has the opportunity to use it for the things that that they believe are important. It's 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 one time money, so we're trying to figure out one time expense, and it just sort of it almost matches what the Leary lot would probably cost you know, from our prior plan. I guess if we don't have the money in the budget to, uh, to a town meeting to cover capital items, it should be used for something, something that is a higher priority than four, I guess, my, my opinion. Okay. Thank so, you. I was just going to quickly ask what what was our was our budget if if you figured all of our our budget aside from capital you were saying there was maybe about a hundred thousand left so so that's salaries paid everything like everything we were hoping to do so that's a kind of about where we're at okay good i was hoping there wasn't like a big hole somewhere we still had to fill and and then these capitals would okay all right so but we really only have a thousand Provided, I mean, a hundred thousand provided we don't pull any from any other source. So we'd have to pick out of this list what we could or, do with that hundred. Or if we don't reduce, if we're going to carry forward in free cash. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Which is already at the low end of what we right to do. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, is it if we quickly run through these and look at sources? Um, yeah. The police, um, Julie, the police HVC, HVAC system, we were gonna use, um, we have appropriated 150,000 for the church. There probably is around 40,000-ish that is not covered by what D uh, Deerfield Academy is going to do, but that still allows us to use, to return 100,000. And I think that we should um, reappropriate that to the police, HVAC system because you need it needs to be done from a health and safety point of view but also if we're going to get the like the jail cell has to be inspected every year and so if we're going to get you know a pass on that you know and checked off from DPH then it has to have a better system than we have right now do, do we have to do a um, more article on town meeting to make that change? Yes, and Casey has included one. Oh, she has one. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Casey. So the, the dollar figures that we voted on at the town meeting in whenever it was, November, December, January, $150,000 for the repairs to the building. Uh, the repair list was $150,000. Well, we're 115,000 and 35,000 was additional to cover unforeseen expenses. Uh, what have we- Then we also realized now we have to do prevailing wage. So DA is kind of reworking that number. So I think that 113 is going or 112 or whatever is gonna be a little higher because of prevailing wage. I thought the 115 was materials. Oh, okay, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure. And that we were anticipating DA was going to 
help us out with the uh, the labor. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Is that um, Dave was involved with that a little more than me. I'm not sure what the structure was. I think the whole DA thing came up after that. I yeah. think when we voted at a town meeting, we were assuming that was what it was going to cost us. Mm -hmm. Yes. There might have been some volunteer labor in it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. Well, I think um, Bruce St. Peter's and even uh, John, uh, you know, Jack Pachork there, um, they had offered to do some you know minor stuff and you know like exit signs and you know we have all those things that we have to do but my understanding is there's a few thousand dollars worth of stuff that we still have to do and it might end up be totaling 30 to 40,000 so just say 40,000 and so then we would be returning you know we would be returning enough to cover the police HVAC system for money that was already set aside. We hope we're going to return that much. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would anticipate. It's, it seems like De Deerfield Academy is going to follow through with it. Dave's not here to, um, does Casey, do you remember, have you, it's been signed off. He's, so. I think he's still waiting for the MOU. No, it has not been signed off and the estimates right around 50, Carolyn. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so it keeps the numbers keep changing, but it seems like we would have a hundred left to turn over back. And so, since we have such a tight year, it seemed like it made sense to reallocate that money. So, when would we anticipate reallocating the money? At town meeting. At town meeting. Before it's on the before we year, before yeah. we spend it. So in other words, we're going to reduce the 150 to 50. 50. And what happens if it's not enough? I believe that it will be enough from what I understand. You have a reserve fund, don't you? <laughs> well, we, no, not let's, leave, let's leave Jesus. the whole 150 where it is. And then uh, we've got a town meeting coming up sometime in the fall. And one but, would hope that we would have a better understanding of it's about the actual doing costs it. and what was left over. Yeah, but Skip, the money's been sitting there since last year. It seems more, more appropriate to, to transfer it. And then if the costs are more than what we're anticipating, we can fix it at town meeting in the fall. Now, why did we put the money there in the first place? Because we thought we were going to have to do it. We are going to have to do it. Well, I thought we thought we were going to have to do the whole thing. But we are going <laughs> to. I'm sorry, like skip that, but we are going to have to. But it, I just feel a little squidgy about this because um, we're not doing anything illegal. Don't look at me like that. I'm not, I'm not suggesting <laughs> that. But um, but the agreement with DA is that they're going to do the repairs, and then they're going to reduce the money that they give to Correct. us by however much it costs them to do the repairs. So if right. they spend $100,000 on the repairs and we reduce that, we're still spending the full $150,000 right. that we voted. And then we're yep. also shifting the 100 over. But they need to re they need to reevaluate their gift because they took another house off the um, tax roll this past week. So I think this is open to further discussion. So just to let you know, <clears throat> I'm disinclined to fool around with that $150,000 until, until we really know exactly where we stand. That's fine, Skip. I just, we were trying to figure out how to, <clears throat> to do the police station HVAC system. That's all. Bunch of fans, I guess. Handheld? Yeah. Could you explain the shed replacement again? So the shed at the DP uh, at the transfer station right now is that little thing on top of the where the compactor is, that and needs, yeah. it's in it's in bad shape. I think they were hoping to do it a little larger, but it's hard to because it's really tight in there, and um, I just don't know how they, don't they need do. Need a lot of room. They should be outside at more than fifty percent. Well, the they time. are. I think they are. But and you know something, you don't need a lot of room to turn around and have one person in there yeah. or a second person writing a check form. Yeah. The rest can stand outside. 
it gets, you know, when it's pouring rain and it's, it's cold and snow and it's, it's a mess. I mean, I think that there's not a lot of room in there. If they could get a couple square feet out of it, that'd be great. I don't know what they're planning, but I think that was the idea is to just kind of replace what was there and not build some large monstrosity, but just. Well, so is it essentially a repair or is it a It's a replacement. 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 Now, I, I'm not so sure 10,000 is the right number. I feel like it should be a little bit more than that. I mean, you look at a skip shed and we, we, more we than brought that. it down from 15 to 10, and I think there were some of us, including me, would like to see it even go less. I mean, you're yeah. only talking, uh, if you're just talking the shed, so you got a deck and a shed on top. It depends on what, whether or not we're doing yeah. the shed or the shed and the deck. And then, well, we're doing yeah. both. I, then, I mean, deck doesn't cost that much. And then throwing a shed on top of it, uh, an 8 by 10, 8, 80 square feet. And I think that it's, it's going to need some to electrical. Ask. And well, you, know, you, you got to re electrical. It's time to ask our own employees yeah try doing some of that yeah that's the other thing too i mean th there is you know it's hardware in there there's, there's cameras there, there's camera yeah. hardware and, and also the the controller for the compactor so um but you know we got to keep that stuff dry that i think stuff is that stuff's new so they can take it down put it, put it aside for a couple of weeks while they get the project done they'll be back to you for a little more money yep don't say do that in house because then they'll be looking for a painter, an electrician, and a plumber, <laughs> and a builder. We could use all of those. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to do any more. We just need somebody that can pound a few nails and somebody that can do the brush and, so, and someone to supervise. Maybe you. All right. So if we go Volunteer. back to our little spreadsheet here, um, starting where were we down to? The police HVAC is on this other for now. Mm -hmm. um, Weight water treatment, we've already done. Mini excavator, where does that go? This will be a, a, a $23,000 uh, lease to own. I'm not sure where that'll come from, but it won't be the So full is that in the budget already? Well, so we anticipate that that mini excavator will be used mainly for the sidewalk repairs. Mm -hmm. So uh, the anticipation is that for the first two years of that lease, we would be using the sidewalk repair money for that. Um, after that, it would have to go into the into the uh, highway budget. Um, as far as I'm as far as or I know, unless there were other plans. Purchase it right? outright at some other year. Yeah. yeah. Is the existing uh, sidewalk repair money or the new sidewalk repair existing? Repair? Existing, which. Yeah. yeah. Um, makes me so it's listed as a hundred thousand, but we're, we're, what we're hearing is that it'll actually be twenty three thousand ish a year mm -hmm. over spread over four or five years. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Twenty three. For twenty. For twenty three. Twenty three. That's what I was. Yeah. But you just said that it was going to be funded out of the sidewalk repair funds. sidewalk repair if the hun the however much we voted so last it could be year zero correct okay so there's nothing so we're talking about the lease leasing yeah. it for two right. years out of the sidewalk repair money because it's going to save them so much in in doing it okay. we won't have to rent the ex uh the mini excavator then well it's a it's a five-year lease and they can cancel the lease as i understand it is that right carolyn Yep. So that one is zero because it's in there. Okay. Right so that, that line is zero, right? Yeah. Great. All right. HVAC software is out of the budget. Okay. Um, HVAC software is out of the budget. Yes. Does yeah, this building HVAC software. This, this is to replace the Java-based software right. uh, that's that's running um, with uh, HTML-based uh, software that can continue to receive that's, updates. That's down at the, at the, the new plant. The yeah. building. That needs to stay. Yeah, that can't right. come out. But there's no other source of funding, right? So that's right. out yeah. of our budget. Yeah. OK. Senior center repairs, that's mm -hmm. just out of the budget? Yep. OK. Um, the wasn't, there, wasn't there some discussion about community preservation funds? There that? was, and it's included in the um, application to the CPA. 
um, to use CPA funds to do that. Can we move it over to CPA? Have they voted it yet? Do you know? Um, they have not. Okay. And I don't know when the meeting is. Um, but it's a, it's actually included in this 475 right here. Oh. Okay. So we can reduce the 475 by 10,000 dollars, or Eleven. increase the. However you want to do it. There. Uh, Julie, um, yeah. Tim and uh, Casey both have their hands up. Oh. I think Tim's going to answer the question. Go ahead, Tim. Um, if I'm thinking I'm answering the correct question, it's um, that the meeting, the next meeting is um, April 6th at 630. And hopefully we can finalize action on the grammar school project. That was the question. Thank you. Casey? Um, the senior center repairs isn't out of CPA. That's just, that's just to prevent further damage to the envelope of the building. So that's, a, that's an ask out of a fund that covers a capital asset, either free cash, okay. capital stabilization, stabilization, whatever fund we pick. Okay, but the, ap the application to CPA that right now includes that. No. It includes the brick repair, the, the immediate repairs to the building to keep it from falling down before we can fix it. Um, I think we needed to reduce that by one more thousand, I think. Or was it 11,000 for the? Oh, no, it was only no, 10. 10. Oh, it was 10. Okay, it's Ostrowski. Sorry. Perfect. 11. Thank you. So the Ostrowski APR is 11,000. That's out of CPA, right? Do you want to share that again? Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I'm pretty sure that's CPA. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I can see it. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. Back at it. Yep. All right. Ostrowski CPA. Yep. Asphalt sidewalk repairs. That's, that's not. Straight out of the budget. There's no other source. And is that something we've had to add, or we had nobody's voted that yet, have they, or prioritized it? We have two hundred. Was it two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand that we I voted think, last year? I thought we had three. Right. Yeah, right. right. And this is in addition to that, I believe. Well, that was my understanding. The question was, do we do we need it? If we need it, then. I thought last year we voted enough money to take care of repair the sidewalks for what we had. I didn't think we were going to start putting in 100,000 every year. I think the original, the original project was 500. Mm -hmm. And they slowed it down. Yeah. I was trying to find the um, original sidewalk. Didn't we vote that? I know we had funding for two different meetings. I don't remember what they were. It was free cash and uh, <coughs> we just, we just had a term condition, right? Yes, it seems like we're going to lose. Yeah, that. all right. You know what? Let's put it in and then we're going to look at our total and then we'll work up from the bottom and delete stuff that we don't want to fund. How about that? Love it. Does that work? Such all a right. big number, you have to make the. I had to make it wider, yeah. Wider. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so Leary, uh, Leary lot I've got under ARPA. Yes. Right. Um, shed replacement. I thought we already talked about this. Budget. That goes under the budget. Senior housing phase one feasibility. Is that CPA? Anybody? Is that is part of a CPA request that went to? Uh... I believe it is. Yes. Tim has his hand up. Go ahead, Tim. Um. Yes, the actual figure is thirty thousand, and it's CPC from the Senior Ad Hoc Housing Committee, the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee. So do we need to change the number eighty to thirty? Or... Yes, I think the re well. Um, we got 
we we do have a um, um, technical assistance grant from FERCOG, so that reduced that eighty original request. How much okay. was the FERCOG grant? <sighs> it was not. It was not um, fifty thousand from the other room. So I'm thinking, was it fifteen? <laughs> Yeah, it was 15 or 16, something like that was the actual dollar amount, but it starts the needs. Um, it starts the needs. Um, it, it's not the site feasibility, it's the needs feasibility. And that's what we have to go to the bank for. So that's starting the process. So didn't we already pay that 15,000 and FERCOG reimburse us? Or am I thinking of something different, Casey? So the senior needs assessment is actually to determine senior services. Senior housing is completely different. So we've started the process with the feasibility study and actually we have some information that will get presented a little bit later next month, I think, but that's for senior needs. It's confusing because senior needs programs, what the survey went out for and what we, what we got a, a, another grant for was the, um, for UMass to do what seniors wanna see a program with. Senior, senior housing feasibility is we have to verify that we have in fact have seniors that want senior housing and then you have a site assessment feasibility, which is separate. And that is to evaluate the, the site, at least two sites in town um, for, senior, for the placing of senior housing. So there's all these feasibility studies that people are getting confused, but there's three different separate ones. This 80,000 was originally for the site feasibility and the needs feasibility to verify that we have enough seniors to fill our senior housing. And we did get, uh, you know, uh, probably 15 or $16,000 worth of grant money for the technical assistance to verify that we have seniors in need of housing, senior housing. Then the site assessment is separate, which is what the 30,000 will pay for. I know it doesn't add up to 80. I'm not sure where the 80 came from. I am on the senior housing committee, but I'm, I get confused myself. <laughs> so is that 80 an error? Is it supposed to be 30 on this? That's board? what I'm wondering. What, how, how, how much should we write in the box? So. I, 30 is correct. 30 is good? Okay. okay, great. So we'll leave it at 30. Do we want to leave the 80 at 80? Um, I don't know what the original application said um, because it, it did change because of the technical assistance. Casey, do you have a clarification? I do. The original application said 80. Okay. We didn't know it had been reduced to 30. If that, the original application says 80,000 in FY23 for senior feasibility phase one, senior housing feasibility. And, well, we will add it on for next year if we need more for the site, okay? I'm just saying we the thirty thousand will cover what we need to go to the bank to say we have a need for senior housing because we have umpteen how many numbers of seniors that are willing to move into senior housing. I do not think that's going to be a problem. So we can put thirty five thousand into FY twenty four. I think yes. Why don't we do that? To, and that would be um, for the site feasibility. Or, but what, okay. uh, what I'm trying to do is we've got 80,000 showing up as the uh, requested amount. CPA funding of 30,000, that leaves us with 50. There's 15,000 other, I'm not sure where that's coming from. There's some and, grant. And then there's $35,000 that's left. Right. 35,000, okay. can we move that into FY24? Yes, why don't we do that? Do you want 35,000? Yeah, I think that okay. adds up. Like I, uh, yes, right. that makes sense. <laughs> so this demo, the old grammar, the muni office 
there's no dollar value associated with that for FY23. So we're not gonna do anything there. And then capital stabilization, we're gonna be taking money out. So there's no reason to put money in, right? Right. You guys good with that? Okay, so that leaves us 293,000 out of the budget when we have 100,000 available. So do we wanna spend 193,000 out of capital stabilization and do all of this? Or do we want to remove anything off of this list? A bunch of stuff that's everything else down below, there's nothing in FY23 for it. So they're all, I'm just ignoring that. That's, okay. yep. <laughs> that's your problem. <laughs> Go ahead, Brenda. Uh, I think it's possible that the select board will choose to spend the ARPA money towards some of these projects, but I don't know that that decision's been made yet. Right. So I'm not sure if it's a decision we have to make today, but I think we're good right here. I mean, it, it just it definitely helps to understand where we're at. We're yeah, looking at 193. We just quickly go down, if you don't mind, sure. down through each one, and just so that everybody knows what we're talking about again. Yep. What What's the current? What do we have in capital stabilization? Sorry, this is a repeat question. Seven hundred fifty thousand, or something yeah, something like that. Like that. Yeah. And so we have one, like point. one, two in general. Yeah. So there's two million dollars in stabilization. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to start at the top and work down yeah. and yeah. just talk about what each one is. Yeah. And All right. Just... Not as bad as I thought this was going to be. So thank yeah. you for doing this exercise and being <laughs> the spreadsheet master. Yes. yes. That's beyond my capability at the moment. I can. <laughs> you want me to do that? They are, they are listed in, in order of priority. They're, they yeah. are priority. They're in priority yeah. order. Oh, you want like <laughs> I can do totals by priority if you want me to. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do know how to do that. Um, all right. So, Mark, do you want to do this if we just work down the list? Um, sure. So... I guess starting with this Deerfield Elementary restroom renovation. So this is an ongoing project uh, for the restroom renovations for Deerfield Elementary School. <laughs> just uh, what it says on the table. Yeah, I mean, the, these two are, these are, yeah. This these two are just yeah. carrying over from, from last yep. year. It's the third year of funding. And they'll Carolyn, be you're really quiet if you can speak up just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. It's um, the third year of funding. Um, and then they will be done. This so that was why we considered them pre-approved. Not for the flooring, but for the bathrooms. For the bathroom. Yep. Okay. No, and for the flooring. Yeah, flooring, the, we're, flooring is a third year too. Yep. We're we're in the. I, I'm not sure exactly what year um, it is that we're in, but this is a multi-year flooring project. What I'm saying is, I don't think it's done. No, it's not done. Okay. No. Yep. Oh, you don't think the I I no I the the flooring's were... not done for sure. They have a lot more rooms to do, but um, but I uh, think that it is the last of the bathrooms, and that might be what you're thinking of. Maybe they, they still have like kindergarten and first grade kind of or what those okay bathrooms that still need to be done. But they all the main bathrooms at least. I mean, and they aren't totally redone. They're just new stalls and kind of some cleanup. So and it's been nice. It looks much better. All right, flooring. Yep. We already talked about that. Yeah, so I think we're wastewater going treatment facility. Yeah, we're skipping that one. I think. Right. Uh, okay. No, so we're. I mean, it, it's a debt excluded item, right? Yeah. Assuming we vote for that. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. There we go. Next. Uh, the next item here is the 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 wood chipper. This is a, a safety issue. So this is the wood chipper for the highway department. Uh, we do have the wood chipper that we have. Chris indicated that there, someone is interested in the wood chipper, and it becomes a question of how much. Right. So we could make some money on it. So we may get a little money, bit of money back, which I assume just ends up going to the general fund. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if we want to sell the danger. Well, 
maybe maybe if well, beyond the I'm scope gonna, of this meeting so. yeah yep. okay. uh and then yeah the next is the air conditioning for the skills and music room this this we prioritize is kind of like a you know health and safety thing um yeah. next is the commercial dishwasher same deal uh walk-in cooler replacement keeping it you know food safe um please hvac design engineering instruction this is for uh this is for our customers at the police station, if you will, um, you know, the folks in the jail cells. Uh, so, yep. Um, we didn't it's find way that over one here. Yet. It's the other. This is the rollover from the oh. church. Was that going to cover the whole cost? I thought that was just going to take $40,000 off the top or something. No. no. Well, if we did move the 100, it would cover, I think, all their costs. Okay. Yeah, for, for that work. And would this be a candidate for ARPA funding? Should that church thing fall through? I think so. Possibly. What have we talked about a little bit about that? Yeah. <laughs> Get back in on that. All right. Uh, we're skipping over, I think, this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, that one has already been voted and approved by yeah. the town. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then we get into the mini excavator. This is going to be approximately what uh, the original the, the reason why it's on the the, the list is 100,000 is the original ask was for 100,000. Um, we have the opportunity to do a lease to own for 23,000. So however you want to, you know, do that, we can we can put it in as either 100 or, or 23. The original ask was 60,000, just so you all remember. What's that? The original ask was 60,000 several years ago, that. if you all remember that. So here we are, and, and, and a couple years finger, later. And the finger point, you should have bought it when I told you it was 60. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think and it is a different machine, it was, but anyway. It wasn't the use of that. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. So not quite $1,000. No, I, like I said, I think it's, it might be a different machine as well. So, so. so what do we, we do need to budget something there, right? No, no, because, because we are going to spend the first, the first two years. I don't think we'll we need use to. The, right. the money that we have already appropriated for the cat the sidewalk project which okay. makes me a little okay. nervous because we're you know that's less sidewalk we're doing but i guess if it helps us save money in the long run and maybe it's a wash i don't know we'll see um right. yeah and then we're going into the building hvac building software HVAC. um this one is just a not only um reduce waste in the building but also to uh um be able to uh, run it on newer newer computers as they need to be replaced, or as it needs to be replaced. I believe it's probably only running on one machine. Uh, then we have the senior center repairs. This is just to prevent future damage to the envelope of the building. Um, we have the Ostrowski APR. That one's self-explanatory. Um, old grammar school historical preservation. Yeah, that's also another one that um, we can probably skip over. And then the asphalt uh, sidewalk repairs. This one was a request that came through uh, by the select board. So um, when it came to town meeting, uh, we uh, decided to set aside uh, 100,000 out of free cash. And then we ended up doing um, another, um, looks like 25,000. 150. I'm not, I'm not sure if that. No, it was 150. Oh, it was 150. Yeah, okay. Totally. So we did 150 from oh. capital and one, 100 from free cash. Yeah, last, I'm looking at the skins stuff. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, yep. so we're doing 150 out of capital. Specification. So this is for, I believe, uh, this another another phase of uh, funding for that. The original quote was like 500,000. So we were slowly going to do some each year, but we haven't quite got started. Okay. On that one, I would ask, Selectman to think a select board to think about debt exclusion just because we are tight on cash. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't help the taxpayers with their tax rate though. It does hmm. not, but it does help the town with other budgeting priorities. That's true. In other words, if we did debt exclusion, it's like taking a hundred thousand dollars and sticking it. Sticking it in uh, free cash. It would have to go in probably in fall because we've missed the window for this one, but could do it later. Yep. Yep. Right. And then we have the. So I would just say that the finance committee is not unanimous on that request. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, think about it. That's all. Okay. Yeah, then we have the town common rehabilitation. 
Um, and Leary lot, I think we're, we're, we're not, we're not putting any, any figures into that for just yet. Uh, okay, and then we have the senior, yeah, senior housing phase one feasibility. Um, you just discussed that. And then we have uh, what? Oh, you skipped the shed. Oh, the shed, sorry. Yeah, the shed. I, I'm not sure if that's going to be 10, if it's going to be 15. Um, it was it was originally put in as a as a placeholder until we could get a quote, but it's going to be somewhere around probably the 10 to 15. I've heard somebody talk about just repairing what's there too, but I don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no one quite I'm not in the middle of that discussion. Okay. Okay. So do you should we put 15 down? No. No. Leave it at 10. I still think you are going to need it, but. Oh, you're going to do the electrical work inside. You got to do no. What's that? All right. I heard that. All right. Senior housing, we already discussed. And the other two are not going to be Yep. So that gives us a roll up. Here's the roll up 293,983 out of the some sort of budgeting. Wasn't that what we started Yep. It was. Let's go back to the season. The season. Uh, this uh, senior housing thing, so it's 45 and 30 or? Um, no, this this was the request. So there's oh, 30,000 gotcha. out of CPA and 15,000 out of something else. Yep. Okay. Yeah, my screen's not lined up. Yep. No worries. <laughs> How much money do we have in CPA funds? And it's, you know, it's, it's like three categories, subcategories. Yes. Do we have enough to do that? I, think so. I don't know. I'm asking. I have no idea. Tim, Tim knows. Tim knows. Yeah, but it's limited to different categories. It is. Yeah, Tim can tell you, John is in the unrestricted. Well, a lot of the undesignated went to the park ask, project. Ask Tim, what's in CPA funds? Um, is Brenda there? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, but she can tell you the correct figures. Well, I don't have them off the top of my head. Okay, well, Jack, Jack was pretty close. We have about two million. Um, some of that is designated uh, for various things, and some of it is not. But I, I think there's the funds are there, right? Yes, I, I can tell you roughly that there's about six hundred thousand in the fund set aside for senior housing. There's a smaller amount in the park fund because we've spent so much money toward the park. It's it's in the the 30,000 range, I believe. There's about 1.3 or 4 million in undesignated money. And then there's another small amount from the final category. Um, so it all adds up to about $2 million. But with the requests that are coming this year, it's going to be reduced. And is, Julie, was that number being reduced every time you put money toward it? Or so is that 866 at the top? Is that what you think's in CPA or is that what you think will be left in CPA? That's the total of the requests we have written down on this spreadsheet. Okay, thank you. So I, there is definitely enough money to cover all of these requests and leave several hundred thousand dollars left in, un, in the undesignated fund. Do we know how much comes in each year? Is it around three? Um, this year, we had a local surcharge of $252,000 and change, and we got a 100% match from the state That's of $252,000 and change. Great. That's great. Okay. Thank you. So Okay, so that's 866,000 out of CPA. At the moment, 500,000 out of ARPA, which is the Leary lot. This debt excluded is just the sewer. So the part that's already been approved plus the extra 3 million that you're gonna request this year. And then the other, the 100,000 is the recharacterization of the church funding and the 15,000 that was that grant for the senior mm -hmm. housing survey. So I'm wondering to be open with everybody on that uh, sewer, that 5.6 million, would it be more appropriate to put $19 million in into that? That's what was approved, voted by the town, and we'll spend 
5.6 this year. So no, it's 19 million total, most yeah. of which are spent this year and next year. We spent about four, right? Close to four. Yeah. Well, this won't even show up on the um, no, it won't, warrant, right? Way at it. Oh, at this list. Yeah. And that, that 19 million was actually appropriated in fiscal year 19 mm -hmm. or for, for fiscal year 20. It was right. at the 2019 Sorry, annual town meeting. So if I just delete it entirely? <laughs> yeah, it makes it look better. <laughs> I think so. It's a decision that was made three years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bond council requires it to yeah. be on our capital plan. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let bond council do it. <laughs> we do what bond but council just wants. Just the 5.6 or the whole 19? I'm not a flyer. They wanted the whole 19. They, yeah. they, they want the whole 19, but they also want it in the, in the time frame that we spend it. So that's why we have to account for it every year, the amount that we spend in that year. And then right. do they, I'm just wondering, as the years go on, do they want it like the interest that we're paying each year on a capital thing? Or is that something different? We'll see that somewhere else. You'll see that somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Allison? So um, I'm wondering if we could have either now or some other time, a conversation about the library project, because it's not recommended by the CIPC, but I think mm -hmm. it warrants a conversation since it is another large borrowing item. Um, and I think it probably needs to be in the context of our long-term debt. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could think back to the indicators that we did, I, I, I mean, I think it's worth looking at, especially given the grant and the fundraising that the library is doing, just to, just to make sure we've got all the cards on the table. Yeah. Um, with it. I don't know if, if today is the best, I mean, Julie, you can decide. I'm not sure if today is the best day for that conversation, but. Um, if, if, I believe the trustees are having an emergency meeting tomorrow, okay. which will probably address some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Denise yeah. Mason, Denise Mason and myself are meeting with the library trustees tomorrow. And um, what we're trying to do is explain that um, it's going to be very difficult to do a 14 or $16 million library, um, you know, plan. So we can, yeah. can, oh, Carolyn, can you talk up a little bit? I'm sorry. Uh, what, what we're trying to. That way instead of towards us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm yelling, John. I'm yelling. Okay, Denise Mason and myself are meeting with the trustees tomorrow. We requested the meeting because of the cost um, escalation of the project. And so what we want to do is talk with the library trustees about what can be wavered out of the prescriptive library program and still retain the $4 million, um, you know, um, grant. So how do we get the library back to, you know, a seven or $8 million project from, I mean, the, they're building libraries now, or they're building the DEETS has told us the architects that it's about 800 or $850 per square foot. So we're talking about a 14 or $15 million, $16 million library. So we can't afford that. So how are we going to make this happen? And that's why we're having the meeting tomorrow. Well, that'll be helpful. I think yeah. um, for me, it will be it would be good. I mean, we could if the if it was a wastewater treatment plant and not a library, we could afford it. We would find a way. So I just mm -hmm. I want I I don't I'm not saying I I necessarily want to you know, ruin the financial future of the town by funding a library we can't afford. But I'd like to know what does it mean that we can or cannot afford it? What does it mean for our long-term borrowing, our debt limit, all, all of that? Um, yeah. And I think we could probably pull out those indicators and and maybe Brenda can help us plug in numbers or, or it might be clear. So it's not gonna be on this warrant no matter what, right? Correct. So, so here's what I'm thinking, I totally agree with you. We have two more meetings before the warrant has to be finalized, and yeah. we don't have a final budget voted yet. Yeah, um, and we haven't looked at any warrant articles. So I would propose that we have that discussion 
maybe after town meeting yeah. even. That's awesome. Um, but I think here. we do need to, we definitely need to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, well, and if you come up at town meeting, you know, that's true. Uh, one way or another. So, I mean, I would almost guarantee that it does, yeah. given how the last town meeting so far makes copies have a tendency to come up. So we might want to just be prepared to have a plan for when to talk about okay. it. Well, Good point. Uh, as I understand it, the, the intention was to ask for that at the fall special town meeting. So it might yeah. not come up. This yeah. Week. Okay. Because we, yeah, we won't hear until I think July on the right. grant. And okay. then we'd have to hopefully put it on a, if we we're going to vote it, it'd have to be on a ballot with something that's already happening. Yeah. So then if it does come in, in the fall, I think some good, clear, unified messaging would be help, helpful. Mm -hmm. that. Not that well, you I agree. can anticipate. There's right. an, a plan A is um, if we get state ARPA money, this is state ARPA money for a three town senior center, then we don't need such a large meeting space in the library and we should be able to get a waiver for that. Um, however, if we get no ARPA money, then with the waiver plan B would be that we would try to expand the library meeting room and be allow the seniors to have a space there, which is not allowed under the prescriptive library um, grant program. But so in the library conversation that we had when they did the presentation, the Square the footage. senior center can use the library space. It just can't be a senior center within the library. Right. 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 But that's what we would want a waiver for because the you town. Wouldn't need a waiver. You wouldn't need a, I mean, based on, if I'm not an expert, I guess I shouldn't argue. Um, <laughs> for, from what I'm remembering from that conversation, you wouldn't need a waiver as long as it wasn't the senior center within the library. You might need to have some sort of library policy that, you know, determines how meeting spaces prioritized so that the senior center could reserve it. Um, well, we would, what we would, Allie, we would want um, the senior center to be there because we wouldn't, we would, we would be expending money for a space that would allow for a senior center if we didn't get the ARPA funding. I didn't, I thought they couldn't change the square footage, right? I mean, that, 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 grant is dead as soon as you reduce the size of that unit. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what, they, that's okay. what I understand. Well, you could do other things, Trevor. I'm not no, sure. I, 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 I'm happy to, I'd love to see something else done. I mean, I'm right with you, Carol, and I feel like I know we need we to have do to, things with, together. The waivers, and, you have to look at the, what waivers we need okay. to request and what plan we will follow as a town. But we okay. don't need two giant meeting spaces. The town can't afford it. So the idea is to come up with, you know, maximize the usage of the space for our needs. I agree. All right, but that's not helping us tonight. So no, all of that no. is very no. valuable discussion, um, which we need to have, but, but not right this second. So as far as this spreadsheet business is concerned, um, select board, y'all are going to look at ARPA funding Yes. So there's nothing out of this right now that we can vote until you do that, right? Um, That's well, my feeling. When when do you think you're going to do that? Good question. Well, we have to wait till after April first, the final rule, yep. which is Friday. That's Friday. Um, I think. <laughs> I mean, really, the, the the only thing just looking at this list that makes sense for ARPA is the sidewalks. Um, really, what else is there uh, on our list right now? I mean, it would be funded by an ARPA thing. I, I feel like that, in, unless we don't shuffle the HVAC around, but I feel like we could swing everything else either out of capital stabilization, a small ask and free cash and still leave 250 on the table for free cash. If, if that, I mean, I'm not sure what the other members would want. You know, we could talk about that at a, at a meeting after the first, but. Uh, Casey had her hand up. Go ahead, Casey. If you just pick the HVAC projects, you could remove 126,000 right off the top of that 
budget figure. All three. Um, so Which then leaves you with 167,983 to fund. School which can be a mixture of of stabilization funds because you want to use stable the recommendation for use of stabilization funds of any kind is for capital assets not to fill a budget and you have several capital asset questions in front of you restrooms are a capital aspe asset flooring is a capital asset because you're you're making a maintenance or repair to a piece of property that you own Yeah, this is a capital spreadsheet, so it's all capital, right? Right. Well, it's defined in the bylaw, but a capital asset is actually defined in, uh, I think, the IGR, right, Brenda? There is an IGR that does address that, yes. So what was the other HVAC type thing you were talking about? Software. Oh, this building software one? The system doesn't run without the software. If the software is too old, it creates a, situ a situation where there's inefficiency and airflow problems. And so HVAC goes right back to, to a health impact. But I, I'm not so sure that ARPA is, I mean, just because it's an HVAC, I don't think it's guaranteed in ARPA funding. You know what I mean? I, I just think that a $10,000 project, we can fund them out of capital. Um, I mean, the idea is to use the, cap the ARPA for large projects and one potentially one or two large projects they would have economic development stuff and if we had to i mean sidewalks are important and i can see how it could relate to people walking around and going to the stores and stuff but i think just because it's an ac unit doesn't really mean it has to come out of arpa so what if we recommend this a hundred ish thousand out of the budget, 77 ish thousand out of capital stabilization, and the rest from ARPA. And we'll wait on the select board to look at the ARPA funds and get back to us. I think that... we have to wait for the select board to respond, let them decide what they want to do, and then we have to take and figure out what, what to do with the rest. At that point. Yep. Okay. I, I would, I would put that, Julie, it. you should put back the air conditioning and the skills and music room back in um, to the regular budget. Yeah, I, I don't, that's not something that we like that idea, huh? Yeah. No. I, it's in a, I don't want to have to pay this back. So we have, oh, to you're worried that it might not fit the definition of the ARPA. Right, right. I, I've heard too many stories. Um, so we just have to be careful. The good news is it sounds like we can actually probably fund most of these things if we use us some of the capital stabilization money and don't contribute to capital stabilization. So this right. is the capital stabilization usage year. Right. Um, Problem is last year was too. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, but don't forget, this is the budget for capital stabilization, yeah. which is not which we're, we're not going to. So huh? no, we're not we just don't do it. Right? No, we already didn't include okay. that. Yeah, yeah, this is this is Sans stabilization contribution. Yeah, yeah. Stabilization yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to take some out. But... Okay. But it sounds like we don't have to cut services, which is great news. Um, I mean, that's what I'm hearing. I would wonder if any of these budgets, like, I mean, Brenda probably already went through them, but there's like, is, is there anything that could be trimmed? Because even a few thousand dollars, you know, to keep it in the stabilization fund since mm -hmm. we're dipping in feels like it would be worthy, but um, 
I, I think the select board still needs to review the Board of Health budget and make a decision on that, right? I think so. Yep. Uh, we won't, we don't, we won't know what's going on until after Thursday, I guess. Yeah. So, okay. In a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah. We're getting, we're, thank you for yeah. all the hard work, Julie, and all, right. all these boards. Still yeah. Yeah. That we haven't seen, correct? Mm. Uh, we're going to do Tri Town Beach any second yes. now. <laughs> and that'll get us pretty close. So we do not have the negotiated police and highway department and um, town admin contracts. We have the 100000 set aside to cover that with the hope that it actually covers it. Yeah, right. All right. Um, I think we've sort of wrapped up this capital discussion. I don't think there's anything to vote on today until the select board looks at the ARPA funding. Um, so let's look at the. Um, you guys are here for Tritown Beach? Yeah, let's do Tritown Beach. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mark. I can make a motion. Yeah recommend the Triton Beach budget to get it on the table. Anybody know what number it is? It's 630510. Yeah, I'll, I'll let them sit here. How it's one you? of the new ones. Can you get the 630 All right. Julie, you can not share your screen anymore. No. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Except it would be really nice to get a printout of that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll email it to everybody when we're done here. I saved it. So. Thank you so much. That was so helpful to see it in action. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second for Tritown Beach, Jim? What's today? Okay, welcome. So, um, Patty Sarah. Yep. And Diane Kolkowski here to talk about that. Um, Patty's got some good news for us, so I'll let you just go ahead and take it away. So um, as you're looking at our budget, I'd like to share that we uh, finalized today the fact that we're sending a formal invitation to Sunderland to rejoin Tritown Beach. Um, and that is also included the percentages that we are highly anticipating will be agreed upon. So the bottom number that you're seeing for Deerfield's part participation for this fiscal year oddly enough, is actually going to be less than what we put aside for fiscal year 2022. Um, so with the anticipation that Sunderland is going to be joining us, we would be looking at lately having 15.51%. So they would give us $5,949. Deerfield would be at 49.13%. So that would total $17,367. Sunderland would give us 35.36% and that would be 12,450. And that's based on current census studies. So those with those numbers, um, which is kind of odd when you look at this and our increase of 9,000 Deerfield's portion with bringing Sunderland in is actually gonna be less than fiscal year 2022. Why do you think Sunderland wants to rejoin? We've had multiple conversations with different individuals within Sunderland, within the community, and then there's been conversations with different people who sit in their town government, and they express an interest in rejoining us. Okay. Is there, do you have a timeline for that? We're trying to have them involved for May 1st. We actually have had a uh, individual who is a member of their community who is sitting in on our meetings currently to be able to help out in unofficial capacities and not able to vote because it's not official yet. But as soon as they accept our invitation and officially vote on it, then uh, they'll be able to participate officially with us. So the town of Sunderland has to vote money to join them. Correct. And, yep. and do you have an agreement with them? Of how much you're going to have to pay for this current year? This invitation, so for fiscal year 2023, it's all in the invitation that's outlined to them so that okay. they can do all the votes on it. Right. Cool. What is that? Because it's not on our budget sheet, right? That is not. We yeah. just we just got that okay. information today, uh, probably about four hours ago, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. 
to, uh, and in all disclosure, we honestly didn't think we'd see funding this year from them. We thought it might need to wait till they got the special town meeting and it would kind of be back funding to help us backfill. So we're very excited that through open communications between the towns that they're willing to consider the so financials right from the beginning. Approximately how much is their annual contribution likely to be? Is their annual contribution? Yes. So for fiscal year 23, we're looking at $12,450. Well, so let's see, 12 for the 30 years that they haven't paid anything. <laughs> 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 I might scare them away, Skip. <laughs> we, uh, we'd also like to talk as you look at the budget real quick, just to give some emphasis. Uh, what you'll see on there is that majority of what we're looking for is money to support maintenance and salaries. And as we all know, everything's gone up, so salaries have gone up with it. Um, we are going to anticipate our revenue coming in to help us with our expenses, as well as we have started sourcing a large base of volunteers and donators for us to help us out with some of the capital work that we have down there that needs to be done. Um, if you've driven by Tritown, you can see that there's a little bit of growth, there's painting, there's maintenance, there's work on the bathhouse, all different things that we are anticipating taking on over the course of the next year through different organizations in the area that we're asking for donations and uh, for volunteer hours from their employees. One of those is the company that I work for. So I kind of wear a dual hat, as I said, on Tritown because I'm able to volunteer our folks. Have on your board now? Currently, we have three from Deerfield. So it's mm -hmm. Diane, myself, and Ken Cutterback. Okay. Um, Waitley has John Edwards. John Edwards is stepping away is our understanding. Um, and Andy Mahalik is also on from Waitley, but he's not been able to attend any of the meetings. We're not sure why. So that, I don't know if that works. So do we have any other members? At this point, no. So we'll be bringing in Sunderland and they will bring in members from their community to be able to help us on the commission as well. And we are hoping that John will be able to generate some interest in Waitley from other individuals. Uh, if not, I've been talking to a few folks I know from Waitley as well who might be able to help us out on the Waitley side of things because it is a lot for the three of us to take on right now. Can you tell me what the current status is? What have you used at Tritown Beach for for the last few years? I can't tell you. The last two years, they have not used Tritown Beach. That's about I can tell you for the past two years. And have they used the money? So the money has not been used, but it will be used from fiscal year 2022. So for fiscal year 21, it was completely closed. So as far as I have been told and what we've seen on the spreadsheets, none of the funds were used. But the funds that have been set aside for fiscal year 2022, we're going to use a majority of that to one, we're going to bring on an employee who's going to help us with getting everything up and running, somebody who's familiar with the past of Tritown Beach and how it was run, what needed to be done, hiring lifeguards, things along that very short term in that role. And we're also going to use it to help us funding the remediation of Dwarf Bush. Uh, there is a, an entire plan that we have in place that we're going to be discussing and reviewing at our meeting on Monday evening, uh, along with an agreement with one of the agencies that can go in there. They'll evaluate the dwarf bush, the growth over there, what we need to do to be able to address that issue, put that plan in place for us to be able to approve, and then we're going to apply funds to that. The rest of the funds that we're going to need to be able to do for that agreement, we're going to try to solicit through donations through some of the larger companies and organizations in the area. How about the Canadian people? <laughs> well, I was down there yesterday trying to yell at them and it didn't work. Um, <laughs> there is lots of different options in that area. Trying to deal with them on a long-term basis, um, it's a challenge. I'm going to put it to you that way. Uh, decoys don't generally work. It'll bring geese in. It's quite the opposite. Um, one of the biggest deterrents for geese is uh, something that a lot of people don't like to talk about is that's when you start to hunt them. Um, and we have people who have approached us about hunting the geese down there during the legal hunting season. Um, I have talked with Mass Wildlife and Fish and Game, and they're willing to try to help us to work with that as an issue. But I think the more it is used, the less geese we'll see. Our long-term goal, and I don't want to speak out of line, Diane, if I'm talking too much, you can speak. But our long-term goal is to see it used year-round. We would love to see it uh, in the winter when it's froze, have it be someplace that's deemed safe for us to be able to have people to go down there and use it for ice skating, for individuals to go down there to use it to fish. If you want to use the pavilion for people to be able to come to us and say, hey, we want to use the pavilion. We're going to have a picnic. We're going to have a cookout. We're going to do different things. So we'd like to see it become something that's not just a destination for swim lessons and the camps and for people to use in the summer. We'd like it to be 
all year in different ways. And it might not be able to have a use, let's say in the fall or during the mud season in April, but it's a great spot to go ice skating, to take your kids down there to be able to enjoy. So we have a long-term goal for the area as a whole. And the more it's used, the less you'll see the bees. Well, there's the, the, the avian flu that's killing the canaries. Uh, it's pretty deadly. I'm sorry. It's pretty deadly. It's going to lower the population. Whether or not it'll affect the ones coming through our town, I don't know. So it seems like there's a lot more hours for lifeguards here. Are you increasing the um, coverage? I can't say necessarily that we're increasing um, the number of hours that they'll be there. Our, our hours as a whole, I think our hours going to kind of mirror what they've done in the past. But we do think that there needs to be a higher population of lifeguards at a given time, as well as we think that we need to be able to rotate them through for their own peace of mind. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever been anywhere where you have lifeguards and you have kids from camps there, as well as you have people that are coming in to visit. Um, and one lifeguard, that's a lot of people for somebody for one person to watch. So to just have one lifeguard down there, I don't think is realistic because they would then need to police the gate to make sure everybody has passes and permits as well as try to watch and make sure everybody's safe. So we have added in additional hours for lifeguards in the anticipation that we're gonna to try to have one where they'll rotate through if somebody will watch the gate to make sure passes and permits exist for the people that are coming in to use it, as well as we'll have somebody who will probably be out in the water, somebody who will be on the shore to be able to watch the number of people that are there. I can tell you that River Valley Day Camp is anticipating 70 campers using that four days a week for an hour and a half. That's a lot of people, a lot, a lot of, of kids, for, for a lot of yeah. responsibility. And without this sounding wrong, the demographic of our lifeguards, that's a lot to put on them. Um, demographic of lifeguards tends to be younger. Um, so having a couple people down there to share the responsibility when they need to tell somebody you can't come in or you got to get out of the water, um, having a little backup next to them, I, I think, think is a good thing. Had three, three lifeguards during camp. Did they? Okay. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. We, we, we're all new. <laughs> so we're learning kind of as we go um, and trying to anticipate. And we'd rather over plan for extra lifeguards then be under and not be able to have what we need are you confident enough of sunderland's participation for us to reduce the dollar value to 17367 i will not reduce that based upon what i know <laughs> <laughs> um i'm confident that they're going to join us um it's new for the, some of the people in their government and it's not new for other people in their government. Um, how much they'll learn at the time and how they'll feel when it comes time to voting, I can't speak for anybody in that position. So a town meeting to vote to join. Yeah. Right. Town yeah. meeting, that's yeah. what we have to do. So Someone has the same kind of problems we have. Funding is always a problem. That's why they didn't join it 30, 40 years ago. Their communities are much shorter. <laughs> But it's in the bills aside for sure. I don't All right. So what is the number if Sunderland doesn't join? So if Sunderland doesn't join it's the number listed on twenty seven two twenty. Yep. Oh I see. And I think that's what we should vote. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. you're getting money back. Yeah. Everybody likes to so get money. If someone doesn't join, you're going to have the same number of lifeguards? Yes. <laughs> I just want to say I'm really thankful to have Tritown Beach people here explaining this budget this year because this is my fourth year doing this and this is the first time I've ever I've never been there I'm, I'm you know yep. I didn't grow up in town and uh it's really nice to have like some context for what this money is in the past we've always sort of I mean I've always approved it just because it's like a small amount and nobody really knew what was going on with it so thank you very much for for your vision and your willingness to come and explain it um because it makes it feel a lot more I'm a much more enthusiastic to support this budget than I've ever been. So. Any further discussion? No, it's been moved and seconded for 
Tritown Beach expense at $27,220. Go ahead. Um, we're supposed to be giving level service. This doesn't appear to be level service to me. Well, they're, they're adding multiple lifeguards. So his argument is that's not level service, but any, any yes. more days to the season, correct? Right. Yes. The longer season. The longer season. So what's the increase in the season? We, I believe we've gone two additional weeks. I believe it was two additional weeks that we've added into the season. At the beginning or the end? At the beginning. I just, I don't know. I think it's not, maybe it's not fair to other departments to let one department increase their service and the others keep level service. Just a thought. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, but I don't, I feel like it's such a small budget and it seems to me based on my, you know, few, few years on this committee that this is something that maybe used to exist and didn't have a planned cutback. It just sort of fell into disrepair. Um, so from that perspective, it, it seems like a resuscitation and not an expansion, but I think it's a valid point. The would you we're anticipating with the things that we have planned for down at Tritown that we'll see more people coming in and using it. So we'll have additional revenue to be able to support our expenses. Are you gonna change the seasonal fee? So to raise my word again, so we are discussing that. There is a very good chance that the fees are going to change. Um, I know that we are discussing already and have communicated with River Valley Day Camp, their fees changing. So that will make a big impact. Uh, their fees previously were five hundred dollars. Uh, we're looking at anticipating somewhere between seventeen fifty and two thousand dollars for them for the summer. So that's going to help us with a lot of our expenses. And then the passes will change as well. There is an old fee schedule where they used to charge Sunderland and all the different towns all different amounts. We can see that changing. We're also trying to research what the swim lesson fees used to be and where those funds go and how those come back into Tri Town to determine that we have those to use as well. So do those fees, will you get those fees in addition to what's voted here? Yeah, because those use are those used for our expenses that we use. So our electricity. Oh, oven. I see, to come yep. from revenues. Got yep. it, got it, got it. So if you take in additional funding, you would be able to, you would, we couldn't get any of that back, great. Right? You would spend <laughs> that on Tri Down Beach. Yep. Yeah. Right? yep. Okay. Additional funding would also help us if we get that when it comes to the dwarf bush remediation project that we have. The estimates that we're getting for that are between 30 and $35,000. And I believe what we have left in our budget this year is somewhere around 22. So it will help with that greatly. Could you just explain what that is? The oh, budget? now you're asking for complicated uh, no, stuff, Rodney. I mean. I just want to know what, what so the, the dwarf, go ahead, I'll let you. Yeah. Well, it's in, in danger. So we just can't go in and pull it out of town or pull it up or whatever like that. We have to take that into account any kind of changes. If we want to put down Could you speak into the microphone, please? Oh, I'm sorry. If we want to put down a nice new beach sand or something, yeah. we, we can't disturb the, the endangered plants. And it's it's growing over it's, the beach. Is that the idea? It's right on the edge water. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and they're they're going to do an assessment and make recommendations as, yeah. as experts. If yeah. It's all beyond sure. my ability. Um, and they have to do it at certain times of the year because of its growth mm -hmm. and so forth. And oddly, I found out that it's most um, found in the eastern part of Massachusetts and not around here. Oh. But we lucked out. Yeah, we said he's right. Maybe. And it's not the entire Tri Town Beach, it's only in sections of it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yep. So, a remediation project will help us with going in there to find the right ways to be able to control the growth and move the growth. Back to your comment about it not being level services, do you want to propose a change to this? No. 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 Which is vote. I think considering that uh, what they paid a couple of years ago compared to now, what they're going to have to pay may be a little bit over level service. So 
or I think we should give a chance to do a job of what they want to do. I think it's been missed from a lot of families yeah. the last few years. And I actually completely agree that more lifeguards would be really good. When you have little kids in the water, it's very nerve wracking. If, if not uh, taking care of the kids, then maybe they can chase the geese away. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, they always did double maintenance. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Killing two birds in one stone. Any further discussion? No. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Tritown Beach expense for $27,220. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that was unanimous, right? I think so. Okay. Seven. 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 All right. Um, so now we have summer swim program. Is that you guys as well? well motion uh, to recommend the summer okay. swim program 630-5400 at 6310. Okay. Second. Any discussion? So these two haven't seen this, but <laughs> Here, I, defend this budget. I, I threw something in yesterday and just said, this is it. So um, I basically took the swim program budget that we would have had um, before we didn't have a swim program and I'm offsetting it with some of our revolving fund money because all of the swim program revenues go into a revolving fund. So if we did have a swim program and your expenditures were more than what I had on here, we could take it out of the revolving fund. I just did it so we had something in the budget for swim program. Um, so this is comparable with what I had budgeted for fiscal year 20 um, with Beth, Beth Foley's help at that time. Um, so this is just the town of Deerfield. This is just the town of Deerfield, yes. Yep, so this is the swim lesson. I'm sorry, I zoned out for a second. You said if it was, if it ended up being more than this, there, there is more in the revolving fund that there is to cover it? Okay. There is, yes. Yeah, so I figured we could absorb anything into the, into the revolving fund just so we'd have a budget for this year and then next year we'll know better what, what it's really going to cost. Maybe we can entice weight week kids and Sunderland kids to program too and those towns can support the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, well, it, I, used to, it used to be so all the river valley can go, but also all morning long, just kids from any of the towns would take lessons too. Now, yeah. uh, um, I do have a question. Would this, would the instructors be the same individuals who are also being hired as lifeguards or would they be separate individuals? So we're learning. We just gonna, I want to emphasize again, we're learning and we're trying to understand all of this to be able to get a handle on it. And the swim program, as I said, is very new and we're trying to really understand it. My understanding is that it can be the exact same individual. And then I think previously it was the same people that did it. So because then second question is, could then some of this be applied to the lifeguard salary or wages? It, it could potentially be that way. But I think that we need to look and see what we're going to get first for lifeguards and what we'll get for instructors. I didn't even know a second swim budget existed. Any further discussion Sorry on the swim program? That That's okay. You. No, it's been moved and seconded for the summer swim program at 6,310. Any further discussion? No, all those in favor? Yes. I'm abstaining. And, oh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that's a 601. That passes. Okay, so now you have a budget if you want to do something. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you all very, very much. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming and working on this. Appreciate you two coming. Yeah. It is. Thank you so much. We have a reserve fund transfer somewhere. Yeah, I did. Last minute. I saw the number someplace, but I don't know that. Here. Um, Here. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. I had two. Just, That's two? right. You did at one point. I only have one. Well, anyways, go ahead. They're right there. Okay. Yeah, they're behind your left. Like, I don't have. Oh, there they are. Yes. Okay. Uh, invested in something. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is a request to cover the required pay down on the Oxford property debt. Uh, apparently on the third year that you take out this loan, you are then required to start paying an amount down. And so this was the amount that's required. So we are paying that with today's warrant or tomorrow's warrant. And um, so there's a hole that needed to be filled for $12,815. Well, second. second. All right, any discussion? Question? Mm -hmm. Is this $12,815 in the 2023 budget? It is also in the 2023 budget, correct. Thank you. So when are we gonna get that oh, because we'll have to do it again close. next year if we Very don't close. pay it off. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yeah. Well, no, no, we, we have it in the budget. Years. It's in the budget for 23 in case we, we don't, in case something falls through with the sale of that property. I think they're, they're doing their due diligence, I think, on right. environmental stuff right now, but it's pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Um, any further discussion? No. Um, all those in favor? That's unanimous. Member present member seven. Only your proposal comes. Sorry. Yeah. I don't have the one. There's there's no department head signature. I did so not get Sarah's signature, and I will do that tomorrow. Okay. So there's a signed version of that. So what else do we need to do tonight? Sarah, the, yeah, the uh, treasurer collected. Um, the list of warrant articles we have just, I asked Casey to give that to us just so that we would be able to see what we're facing for reviewing warrant articles. We have two more meetings scheduled before the warrant has to be complete and posted. Um, so we have kind of a lot to do in those two meetings. Um, does anybody want to talk about this? <laughs> do you have any questions? Is there anything we need to say other than there's the list? And... No. Alrighty. Casey, can you give us a little brief on like where you are in the process and when you think we're going to be ready and all that? Well, right now we're evaluating language. We'll be making some changes in the language. The warrant has to be posted on the 14th. The board has this on their agenda for the 6th, which is next Wednesday. And we need to tighten up some of the elements on there. There are some things that were put in as placeholders that as we progressed even in the last several days through evaluation of the budget and our understanding of funding sources, we may not even have to, to deal with. So, but they had to be there. There's also a question about how to deal with a couple of those in terms of a long-term present, a, a longer preparation, like the sewer bylaw. There's, I had a concept discussion with council about that. Um, so that may, that's the way that's worded right now is very simply, but the approach the board can take, which they have not discussed, um, could be as a preface to making significant changes to the sewer bylaws so that at a later date, so that we can tighten up how the billing and the funding sources are available. So I don't hold on a second. Let me pull it up the list up. I had it open, but I have eight other documents open. So um, do you want me to go through it and just give you an idea of where they where these so your basic 
Okay, I'll just start from the top. Article one is a consent article and it's boilerplate for many much of the work that we do in the beginning of the warrant. Could you just explain to, what's a consent article? A consent article is an article that pulls elements of similar activity together for a unified vote. However, the motion can actually be to take each one as a separate vote. What it does is it, it can actually help town meeting move more expeditiously. It allows us to vote all what I did in this first pass, in this pass, you can move the articles around and the, the board may decide they wanna move them around. What I tried to do in concept was keep certain types of articles together. And the last two years we've done consent articles for various activity. Um, but in, in this case, we have a new request for creation of a revolving fund. So that follows the vote for our, our normal vote for revolving funds, which is a boilerplate article we do every year. Um, there may be, there was a question at the time about whether we would need an MOU related to that revolving fund, but that may not be the case. Um, I've actually got a question out to the superintendent about that. We have, again, a consent article that's special appropriations and it's for specific things, reserve fund, OPEB, out of district placement and the 350th. We've done it in this way before, so people are used to seeing it. It also allows us to take a vote on similar things in one in one shot, so to speak. Class comp, omnibus budget, the sewer wastewater enterprise fund. And in this case, in right below that on the beginning of the second page is the phase two upgrades project request. So that's a request to borrow. And we actually represented the ballot question as it was finalized yesterday as a notation in that article for information purposes. Um, then you have your SCEMS enterprise fund. Your, and so here's this place where you see, you may see us pass over FY22 capital projects. I didn't know if we were gonna end up with any. So we left it there, we can always pass it over. Um, FY23, that would be the capital you all just discussed. The reallocation of congregational church funds. If the, if the select board finance committee, if, if everybody all decides by consensus you shouldn't do that, then we can pass it over. Um, we do have the Frontier Regional School Capital Request. Um, community Preservation, which will have its own series of votes that we don't necessarily need to represent on the warrant, but can. Um, we do have a request for an extension of, and this relates directly to community preservation, so an extension of a community preservation grant for repairs to the Indian House and the Bloody Brook Tavern back to PVMA. It happened several years ago, but it's getting to the end of that phase. COVID interrupted Mass Historical Commission's ability to do their work on it. So they're running behind. So we're asking for the extension so it can be completed. We do have a collective bargaining agreement. And I noticed the last time you guys settled a collective bargaining agreement, there was an, there was an article related to that. So if we have that settlement information available, we can provide it or we can pass it over. Um, we do have snow and ice shortfall and proceeds from the sale of real property. So to the request that Brenda just gave you about the uh, an amount of pay down for the Oxford property, this would, uh, this would town meeting, if they approve this, would allow us to take the proceeds of that property and pay the loan down to, loan down to zero when it comes due, assuming the property purchase and sale is completed. And then that the next article is a request for a special act to split the town clerk treasure collector position into two separate positions. That language is fundamentally complete, but the rest of the warrant isn't. Um, there was also a request from the police chief to allow the town to be able to set certain speed limits in certain areas of town. The sewer bylaw I referenced earlier, it came up, it's come up in several conversations over the past five years. But because we're now at a place where we're cost estimating out Old Deerfield, 
it's come right back up to the top of the pile because we need to be more discerning of our funding sources. How can we handle the funding for Old Deerfield in light of the fact that Old Deerfield is, is more of a specialized area? So I've had several conversations with council about it and we probably won't be ready to put anything out there, but it is an opportunity for the select board to outline what people could see at a, a forthcoming town meeting. What really needs to be addressed in the bylaws to make things more successful. And then we have a citizens petition, which is the resolution in support of changing the state flag and seal of Massachusetts that was sent a couple weeks ago. Well, a week ago, but formalized. There are no zoning articles. <laughs> You're smiling, Julie. I had the same reaction. <laughs> you about that. Yeah, you're, you're, okay. kid, you're kidding, right? Well, we do, nope. have, we do have work to do, but we have work to do, but they haven't not ready yet. promulgated anything for town meeting approval. Yep. Okay. It seems like we're missing something, but I know Carolyn and we all said that when we looked at this the last three times. Oh. We are. I'm sure we're missing something. No <laughs> doubt. Right. We'll find out. So you guys April 27th. are voting on the language the sixth. Yeah, we hope to, right, Casey? We hope to. So we hope to have it substantially complete. However, if we need to, we may have to post an additional meeting. The warrant has to be posted April 14th. If we could give you something so that, for you guys to review. Yeah. I would hope to have it by after the next meeting. It's pretty cool. But I want to be hesitant because I want to have the ability to move things around and we may have to flesh out a couple articles a little more. Do you have, I know I had just asked you to print out the list. Um, are there, are there any of these that you feel are pretty, they're yeah. the way they're going to be on the final warrant? I think the consent that. articles are, the revolving funds are, that authorization to enter into a memo of understanding. I may change the title of that depending on what I find out. Um, so I guess the, the, the biggest question is, is will we be able to put in tables and more information related to the funding articles? We may not, but wherever we can, the additions would be to add the tables. For instance, the library interest breakdown. That's, I think Brenda can probably pull that up in a short period of time and get it to me. Um, the acknowledgement of gifts, I usually get that from Brenda as well. So if we can put that in the warrant, we would prefer to. The less we have to provide an additional information, the easier it will be for town meeting to make decisions, I think. Um, we already decided on a public information night on April uh, 13th. So that's a good opportunity to do to take some of that information julie that you've developed that's a good opportunity to to have that ready because we can do power we can do a powerpoint i used to do a powerpoint with my finance chair in ashfield because we did a very short meeting to go over the warrant they tried to keep it to an hour because honestly in ashfield because it's they've already they had already spent nine or ten weeks working on this <laughs> So they were tired, <laughs> which I can totally appreciate. Um, so if you wanted to do that for the 13th, we could take whatever substantially completed language we have and be able to sh flesh it out with people. Because a lot of this stuff is routine. It's the numbers changing. What we wanted to do is take the opportunity to talk about the chronological um, sequence and also the money sequence for the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. So the people understood where the $3 million was coming from. But going over the whole budget briefly can be very useful mm -hmm. just yeah. to prepare people because then they can go back and watch it. Yes. No, I agree. I think that's great. If you're, what you're asking me is, can I give you the, the language for some of these articles? I can, they haven't substantially changed. It's the ones that I'm not, that are not fully fleshed out that 
I may not be able to hand to you because there's some details in a couple that I need to get clarification on. So the reason I'm asking is we're all going to want to read this right before the meeting. And yeah. if we have next week and the week after, and that's it, um, it would be nice to have as much as we can as soon as yeah. we can. I can't say for sure that we could, I think what you're asking me is, will you be able to make recommendations before, before we post the warrant? I think it's doable. I really do in maybe not for every article, but certainly for the boilerplate articles, because if we've got the numbers and settled, then they're easier to make recommendations on. But it may be that we consider doing a joint meeting. Maybe that the 13th is a joint meeting to go over things that are outliers and do the presentation. I don't know. All right. So we don't have sheets yet for the police and the highway, right? Salary. Is that true? Salary. Salary. Yeah, police and highway salary. And I would really like to have a sheet. And um, I think what you did was just put, for the ones that aren't negotiated yet, you just put the same dollar value. But there's more, the police one in particular I'm thinking of because there's the salaries, but there's also overtime and whatever mm -hmm. else that's in there. Um, and we haven't had the opportunity to talk to, also. what? There's staffing that level of control. You don't see right. on any of these budgets until you actually see the detail. Right, right. So even if they haven't completed negotiation, I, I would still find it valuable to talk to the police chief and possibly the highway. Um, well, we, we talked it. about having them both come tonight and then we decided that it probably wasn't- Because wasn't they're going on so, so much about capital. So if you want them to come next Tuesday, I think they're yeah, both- Yeah, and we'll start off the meeting to with do those that. two. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know John is not intending to change his staffing levels at all. Um, Chris has just talked about maybe an additional summer help person, but other than that, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have that flushed out a little better. We've had summer help mm -hmm. for the last mm -hmm. four or Two five years. years so. mm -hmm. Yeah. We could do select board salaries, right? Well, Not yet. We we're we're close on that one. We could do select board salaries and we're, we're close on that one. We, so we could reduce the select board salaries, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't all we right, have to vote like all them. these? Yes, yeah, so we have to vote select board staff salaries, police payroll. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two seven. Is that about what it works out to? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think it's it cheaper to work fewer hours. Select board <laughs> staff salary. Right. Does it, I mean, there's yeah. a, maybe half a dozen items that need to be voted on. Yeah. Including. Um, Maturing debt. How about like snow and ice overage, the Warren article and contract I'm, settlements? I'm hoping we'll have a better number for the snow and ice. Um, in case you want to wait on that. Yeah. How about contract settlements, 100,000? Do we need to vote on that? Well, we're hoping that some of that will be in those budgets. Right. But at some point, we're going to have to say time to vote. That'll be the sure. last meeting before, yep. the, right. before the meeting. Okay. We still won't have it. All right. So next week we're going to do police, police highway. highway, anything else we can. Yeah, yeah probably Any select articles board. that are substantially yeah. complete. We'll talk about. Yeah. Um, I think majority of them. It seems like. And then the following week, and it yeah, it, the sooner the better for getting that verbiage out on the um, warrant so yeah. that we can read it. Completely recognizing the, the it may change so the challenge that you're going through to get it out. Yeah, it's a lot of work. How about interest on maturing debt, Brenda? That's that I just got a cash flow today and I have some questions mm -hmm. and I need to visit with finance, finance, our financial counselor first. Um, so that was what we were holding off on from the last last week. Okay. So I'm also planning on writing a summary of where we are in the budget discussions that I will give out to everybody to review and we'll Great. look at that as a group, but I would hope that, I don't know the process for this. So Casey, do I give that to you guys and you 
print it and it gets handed out with the budget at town meeting? Is that the? How do you want it to look? Do you want to include it in the guide? You want it in the in the book? In the book? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Sure. So yeah, you'd get it to us, and we would incorporate it into the information that we give for the rest of the warrant. Okay. Oh, and did I mention there were no zoning articles? <laughs> <laughs> we got a few extra pages we can print in the annual report. <laughs> we got a couple weeks, right? Yeah. All right. I think that's everything on our list. Do we have any public comment? Did it say anything? Nope. No. <laughs> no. I just want to comment that great, <laughs> grateful we have we have public. Right. Thank you. Nice Woo. to have public. <laughs> yes. All righty. I think so we're moved. ready. Do you have a second? All those in favor? Third. Third. <laughs> Phew. Unanimous. Unanimous. So make a motion to uh, adjourn the select board. Oh, we have our chair here. I shouldn't be making that motion. You're here. <laughs> All right. Well, you second. <laughs> Carolyn. I'm second. 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 I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Thank you all so much.